Hello and welcome to episode 134 of Vogter Gaming. And I told you this was going to be special. It's special for two reasons, namely our two players. This is a Terran versus Zerg. First up is our blue Terran. His name is E.G. De Muslim. Oh yes, we have a De Muslim replay right here on Vogter Gaming. But that is not all, no, because you see his opponent for today spawning as the red Zerg, ladies and gentlemen. This is the single greatest Zerg player of all time. He is so good, so solid, so impressive. Not only did he actually create StarCraft 2, he created the very universe we live in. His name is I M N E S T. That is right, it is I M N E S T versus E G De Muslim. Oh, I'm so excited. You cannot believe the excitement I have to watch this game. The Muslim, of course, a British player, therefore will have my love forever. Also, not entirely sure how Muslim he actually is. That's just a thing I'm throwing out there. Nesty, of course, several time GSL champion, winner of the Open Season 2. That is how far back Nesty has been winning since. Seriously, this guy is so good. There we go, getting the hatchery up nice and normal, but what is the Muslim doing? You sneaky, sneaky boy. He is proxy to Raxing. I am Nesty, and that's what you do. Excuse me. You know, if you're coming up in a tournament against Nesty, you've got to do something special. You cannot just play your normal game. You have to throw his game off, because his build order is simply better than yours. So what you do is, you proxy to Rax the prick. That is exactly what you do. So we are getting a 2 racks. Wow, that is going to hit hard. I mean, this hatchery went up at 15. The spawning pool has only just started now. And the first, in fact, both barracks are about to finish right the hell now. There we go. We have Marines on the way straight up. Of course, one SCV going forward to drop some bunkerage. The other SCV checking to see if he's taking a fast third. But no. So okay, the one SCV is here. He's scouting. Okay, spawning pool not done. Oh yeah, it is time for the two racks to begin. First two marines are out. Time to start building your bunkers. Hatchery finishes, but that's not going to matter. Obviously, he wanted to let the hatchery finish, by the way. Uh, just so that this team would not immediately cancel it. Now we have a spine crawler going down. In fact, two spine crawlers going down. But the second bunker is going down out of reach of both of them because he is just going to build them here and move at least one around to this side. Obviously he wants to get uh, Zerglings out as well. Here come the first group of Zerglings. But the first bunker it looks like is going to finish first. Certainly well before the spine crawler. And now some star step micro from the the bunker finishes. Okay, now this bunker is within range of the hatchery obviously. We have SCVs repairing it. The second bunker does finish. We have more Marines coming out to join because these two racks are still in constant production. So now we have four barrack, uh, four bunkers rather, at uh, or four Marines in each bunker very, very shortly, doing some sick damage. The SCVs, of course, can repair those bunkers forever. Wow, this is about to dredge my He's got to get in there before the hatchery's killed. Here come all the Zerglings. Now, choosing to focus on Zerglings rather than the Bunker. Bringing out drones as well. Brilliant moves by Nesty. Of course, there's a great opening for the Muslim. And now he runs away. Start stepping the Marines. Doing even more damage. Damn. Now, a thing to look for is, will he kill these spine crawlers? This is important. Because, of course, spine crawlers are super good against Hellions. Which is what he wants to follow this up with. If he's going mech. Which he will be because this is TVZ. And his name is EG the Muslim. Now he's going to finish making Marines out of these barracks. Uh, I don't think Nesty, Nesty does not know where they are, interestingly enough. He's got to know they're proxied. Here he goes, finds them now. Okay, time to, well, I was going to say time to lift the two racks off and go home with them. But no, going to continue the pressure. Meanwhile, in his main base, he's getting two gases up uh, and another command center. So he's going to expand behind this and go into, I assume, some kind of Hellion tank based play. Of course, nesty Zerglings are going to run in here. They're going to find... Oh, snap. Supply Depot Warlock means these Zerglings are doing nothing. 
And this, it looks like he's where he's going to land the barrack. Oh, but one barracks turning around. One barracks, in fact, going to scout back into Nesty. Are both barracks? What the hell? Okay, looks like he's sacrificing his two barracks. Does not really want to make bio whatsoever. Just wants to go straight into factory. And, uh... I'm not entirely sure. Building another command center. Wow. Um, I mean, that's what it looked like, but I didn't believe it at first. So, the Muslim wants to double expand off of this. Holy crap. I'm going double factories. Right, okay, this guy is hardcore mecking. That is 100% mech. Two factories at eight minutes into the game. He really wants to push this. Nice pick up for the creature team there, by the way. And nice... Little aggro here, forcing the spine crawler in that position. Like I said, if he could pick this up uh, for the Hellion, but he's not going to. But killing Zerglings is always good, forcing Nesty to generally make more, but there they go, they all go down. We have a macro hatch going down now in the main, along with this hatchery morphing to the lair. That, by the way, is the correct response to mech, it's to macro hatch. Um, because you want to get units out and put pressure on ASAP. You want to be able to stop the Hellion pressure as early... Holy crap, that's three factories now. The two factories done. One on the way. One making Hellions. One made... In fact, both making Hellions. One researching Blue Flame. Holy crap, how long has it been since I've seen Blue Flame research in any kind of matchup, let alone TVZ. But the thing is... Look at the supply ranks here, 63 to 39. We'll just check, see how much of those are in workers. Quite a bit of that in workers, mind you. But of course, the Muslim just has no units out. He has two Hellions out at the moment. So the sooner you can pressure now as Zerg in response, try to shut down any Hellion attacks, and really, really pressure this second base. Don't allow him to take a third base. You can really stop a mech player in his tracks. Now we do have a Bailing Nest going down. Along with a Spire. The Bailing Nest is, of course, to deal with Hellions and any sort of bio follow-up from the two racks. Obviously, you can go two racks into four or five racks. The way we have seen players like Polt and Marine King do, the Spire, of course, will be very useful against Mech. Uh, Muta's really, really good against Hellions and Siege Tanks. Obviously, because they cannot fire up. Uh, not so good against Thors, but Thors are still actually pretty cool. Uh, it really does depend, A, how many Thors you have, and B, how you use them. Along with how well you micro is. Anyway, we have a force of six Hellions now coming in to the front of Nessie's Bay. Holy crap, I'm yawning a lot, guys. I'm still really tired. Uh, but at least I'm not super headachy. I'm mostly over the owners. He's checking for a third base. Sees absolutely none whatsoever. He does send one Hellion to check. So, five Hellions. Ah, this spy is going to plant, but it's miles out of the way now. And they are doing some damage to it. Fair enough to them. But the problem is now, that's a nice place for it, but there's nothing back here. All that's back here is Lings and Banelings. What the hell? Okay, Terran building armor on the way. Um... Well, that's the first time I've ever seen that in a pro game, I believe. Holy crap, those things are on hold position and so many get roasted. Doing some excellent damage here is the most of... Oh, he does not want to get caught by those bailings though. Oh, one howling goes down for the bailings. Uh, but he still has four left. One up here as well. Vehicle weapons one on the way. Thor's on the way as well. Oh, this hatchery is going down, and if the Muslim moves this Hellion, he's going to spot it. I don't know why that was so incredibly sing-songy, but there you go, it was. And we have a flock now of six muters. Not enough to do any kind of harass with, though. Holy crap, can I please stop yawning? Because we have missile turrets out right now. That's what I said, missile turrets. Okay, so we have drones coming up to this hatchery. Oh, the Muslim check for it. I'm sure he will. Obviously, even if that Helen gets picked up, he's going to know it's coming. Oh, interestingly, we have a barracks going down. Uh, that is his only uh, barracks going down, in fact. 
so he can build more factories. Because that's the thing about when you lose them. Oh, shit. The Muslim will have seen that fourth hatchery go up, so he will be certainly sure of that third. Yep, he did see it go up. He doesn't know about the third, but I'm sure he'll know it's there. He is, of course, expanding again himself. This is going to move down to this location. And I assume... Oops. This command center will move up to this location. So there we go. We do have uh, this overseer about to die because Thor's... I mean, anyway, like, look at that. Look at the kind of damage Thor's do. It is not a great deal. Thor's do damage uh, greatly based on their splash damage. Their single unit damage is not actually that brilliant. The thing about meters is they do only have 120 health. And Thors do destroy them. If they can start getting that splash off, you need to what's called Magic Box your Mutalisks. Uh, whereby they will not be hit by splash damage, but can do tons of damage to the Thors themselves. Thors are at plus one weapons. Plus two weapons is on the way. Siege Tech is on the way. Um, and then for Nesty, we have Glial Reconstitution, Roach Movement Speed, and Zerg Flyer, Caravace Level 1, and Missile Attacks Level 1. So it looks like he's going to go roaches for his ground army, but the uh, the flyer carapace will mean these muters will survive just a bit longer against the splash damage of those Thors. Now we have an infestation pit going down somewhere on the map. I do not know where, it must be in the main. We have an evo chamber, roaches, there we go. Infestation pit is on the way. Meanwhile, terror vehicle armor as well. Also on the way. A starport going down, I assume, for Vikings, since medevacs are going to be pretty pointless since there's zero bio for them to heal. Holy crap, though, these meters are going to get in and do some damage. Only two Thors there. They are going to pick, down, pick off these SCVs before they build the turrets. So there we go. A few worker kills here for Nasty. Nicely done. Needs to be careful, though. Don't want to start losing your meters to Thors. Uh, they do take a while to build back up. They do cost quite a bit in gas. We have Roaches on the way. Missile attacks level 2, so the Roach attack is going to be sick. And we have Hive on the way. So I'm feeling Broodlords. Are you? Oh, I'm so sorry about this yawning. Uh, give me a second, guys. I'm going to grab a drink. You can watch these Thors chase these meters for a second, keeping them up in the main base. Just trying to keep myself awake at the moment to make this game happen. I really like Mech Terror, by the way. It's so powerful and it's so much fun to watch as well. I love the model animations. But here we go. It looks like a strong push now from Demuslim. He's going to catch this base. Is he? It's, no, it's in vision range. Oh, but that is a lot of bailing. Killing those SCVs. Going into the Hellions. Oh, losing some Hellions there. Poor unit control. And now the Muslim has to back off somewhat. He is lower in supply. Nesty has a ton of bank there. Able to just destroy him. He can attack so inefficiently using failings against Thor's. And still keep ahead in supply because of his economy. Uh, holy crap, that's so ineffective by the way. Uh, but the thing is, or so inefficient I, I should say. Because those Thor's are dying. But... Wow, he does kill everything off. Mech is so strong, but look at the difference in supply now. Nessie immediately nearly back up to full, and the Muslim stuck at 137 now. These Thors take a long time to build. So do siege tanks. Wow, queuing up a lot of siege tanks as well. So, the Muslim not using his bank in the most effective way possible. He is keeping it low, but doing so by queuing up units, which is not something you want to do. Because obviously, if you have the money to queue up a siege tank here... That's another siege tank that could be building at a factory right now. That's something a lot of uh, newer players do not get. And it's not something you see pro players do a lot. Queue up units to quite that extent. But still, we have Tunneling Claws on the way, along with Burrow and a Greater Spire for the Broodlords. Oh, yeah. I love Broodlords, by the way, guys. It's one of my favorite Zerg strategies to see. Oh, some roaches getting slaughtered there by siege tanks. But the rest of the roaches are going to pull up into Country Fortress range. And they are going to take that down so quickly. They have plus two attack right now. 
three volleys. It survives four volleys because of the repair, but the fifth takes it down. See you later, Planetary Fortress. And that sets the Muslims' economy even further behind. He does, however, have Terror Vehicle Weapons Level 3 on the way. Terror Vehicle Plating Level 2. So his mech army is getting stronger and stronger by the minute. Getting two additional starports up. That's to get Vikings out to counter the Broodlords in the future. We have one Medivac doing a drop of four Hellions into the back of Nestis' fourth. Uh, is the Muslim ever actually going to drop it, though? The air is tense. Will the Muslim actually drop these Hellions? No, he's going to lose them instead to Muras. He doesn't even think about it. Ah, oh, the Muslim... Guys, if you are going to send a medevac off to do a drop, please do the drop. I know it's super exciting to watch these rotors being borrowed and uh, scanning them so they don't. And in fact, walling them in, or semi walling them in anyway, because that's a neutral supply depot. We have uh, missile turrets. I keep going to call them engineering turrets now. Missile turrets are up so that he'll be able to spot them if they try and move down to here. We have the barracks moving up to take a look as well. And now all the roaches are going to die to sea trans fire. Uh, none of them will die to hellion fire because hellion do like no damage to roaches ever. Now the question is basically how much damage can these roaches do? It does not matter because Nesty has over 4,000 minerals. He can make what he likes. The Muslim, meanwhile, has nearly finished his upgrades. He has vehicle weapons level 3 about to finish. Vehicle plating level 2. Just done. But we have Zerg missed attacks level 3. One road still left. Finally, one is into siege tank range and dies. But we have a huge mech push here now, by the way, guys. So this fifth base of Nesty is going to die. And that's a blow. Like, you want to keep that up. He has the bank at the moment. So it's not going to hurt him in the short term. We have a Foggle going down on all those tanks, by the way. Uh, it's not going to hurt him in the short term, but in the long term, if he can't get it back up, it's definitely going to damage him. And now, look at those Broodlings, man. Broodlords. So many Broodlords. 12 Broodlords at this point doing a ton of damage. 8 crops is being made, so that should save them from the Vikings. And there is nothing the Thors can do but slowly retreat. Four Vikings are currently in production. We have Vehicle Armor 3 on the way. And that will finish the upgrade path for the Muslim. We will have nothing left to upgrade. But again, these Brulings are doing so much damage. We have Vikings out now. And uh, there aren't any Croctors here yet. It's just one Infestor dropping Infested Terrans. But that is not enough. Here come the Corruptors though, so these Broodlords will now be safe because that is enough Corruptors to shut down those Vikings indefinitely. The Muslim is backed into a corner now. He has his back to the wall and is fighting away for his life. Oh, this is so tense. All oh, these are units are clumped up. Bailings coming in. <laughs> so many Bailings against the mech. They do die, but the Broodlords are going down as well. Only four left and they're hurt. They're badly hurt. If the Muslim can kill these Broodlords, he may, may stand a chance of holding on there. And he's doing it. He's actually doing it. The Muslim backed into a corner. Holds. Incredible. This last Broodlord will die. Oh, man. Nesty is getting his fifth base back again. But that was a lot of Broodlords to lose, guys. Look at the way his bank's gone down. I'm not sure if you can see it because the watermark does sit above that. Uh, but essentially went from 4,000 minerals down to about 700. It was crazy. He is uh, in a lot more trouble than he was about five minutes ago. Now the question is, what is his response to this? Obviously getting six more broodlords up now. As the corrupt is chasing away this barracks as well. They are going to take that down. But this mech army is really strong. Once you hit the upgrades of the mech army, I mean, vehicle plating level 3 is about to finish. Once they go on, this mech army becomes so, so strong. It can really take a ton of punishment. If you bring SCVs with it as well to repair them, uh, you stick the SCVs on auto repair, it is really hard to break through a, a Terran mech army like this. 
He does have plenty of Vikings now. That's uh, six, seven, two more on the way. So that will be plenty to fight the Broodlords. Now, my one thing, let me just take a look. He has no upgrades on the air, whereas the Broodlords, I believe, do have upgrades. Yes, they are at 1-1. One, one. But, of course, they could be upgraded further. That's something really... Hmm, I think nesty has been slacking on his upgrades somewhat. Getting the back up for his army, but against a heavily upgraded back army, he needs to be back on the upgrades. Anyway, sea tank fire killing all those Zerglings. Man, hardly any of them reach the front of the Muslim's lines. And now the Muslim has a supply advantage, and this is going to be a problem for Nesty. Because once Mech gets a supply advantage, they can really start demolishing you. There are not enough meters there to stop those Vikings. No corruptors. That is a lot of corruptors though, but the Vikings now are fast enough that they can kite them backwards into the Thors. Now we have Nesty taking another base, macroing up as hard as he possibly can. He needs to get these bases up. He needs to get his income way, way in front. He needs to start being able to remax instantly. The Muslim now at 200 food, finally getting his uh, air weapons upgrade, funnily enough. But that is a bit late. I'd have liked to see that sooner. Zerg Ground Carapace Level 2 finally on the way for Nesty. But uh, that is far, far behind everything the Muslim has been doing. And now for me, the Muslim just has to push. Like, he's not getting any extra bases up just yet. He just needs to push. He's building this command centre. But now is the perfect time. At uh, 200 supply with all the upgrades you really need. To just go in and attack. And wow, what a battle this is. Impossible to tell what way it's going to go. Helgen's getting stymied by Fungals there. Fungals also on the tanks, but the Thors behind are perfectly safe. And it's the Thors that are really dealing out the damage. Vikings as well, killing so many Corruptors. There are not many Broodlords left. Damn, the Muslim is taking this one down. There goes the last of the Broodlords. Now it's only Corruptors left in the air. The Muslim at 172 supplies and Nesty's 123. I don't think Nesty has an answer to this. This is incredible. E.G. the Muslim is going to take a winner off of I am Nesty. One of the top, top third players. Just top stuff off two players in the world. And I am watching it right now. Drones being borrowed to save them. Oh my god. The Muslim pushing his way through. Takes out the fifth base. Moving southwards now towards the more main bases. There are just not enough units here. The Roach is dying so quickly to these upgraded units. The Corruptors going down. And once the Corruptors are down, there is nothing to fight the Vikings. There are no Broodlords left. He can actually land the Vikings right now. He is that far in front. Oh, the question is, can this constant supply of Roaches take down these Thors? It is so close in supply. Nesty was slightly more back, but it's very, very close now. Scans going down. The only thing I'd have liked to maybe see the Muslim get to Raven because he knew Burrow was out. But he's just using a ton of scans. And now the Roach is doing a lot of damage though. Uh, if he can kill this mech army, Nesty might just hold on to this game. It is so close though. He's lost one base. If he loses any tech structures, he could be in trouble. Zerg Ground Carapace level 2 is just about to finish. And those Roaches will survive just a bit longer if he can do that. There we go, that is done now. 18 more roaches on the way. Well, uh, 8 have popped out, 10 are on the way. And here we go, surrounding the Thors, taking them down. Slowly, slowly, he is destroying this mech army. Nest here is held. I do not believe it, that was so close. We have the Vikings landing to do harass with the worst gun in the universe is actually a BB gun and then just lifts up to get away from the roaches. So, so nice. And we have to Muslim sending his siege tank lines again. Now the thing is, Nesty cannot counter attack from this. He cannot push back because he does not have the units and right now he's focused on stopping the Muslim from harassing his bases but he's only got roaches. And roaches do not fire upwards so the Muslim can keep lifting his Vikings and getting away. And oh, a Hellion comes in. Slipping completely by everything and roasting these drones. Oh, I love it. Okay, the Muslim has his fourth base up now. 
funnily enough, cannot upgrade it to normal command because he needs to build another barracks. Because he keeps losing them. Oh, I don't believe it. That's ridiculous. Guys, this is why you always need to keep a barracks alive, even if you're a mech player, so you can build orbital commands. Interestingly enough, when he rebuilt this, he rebuilt it into an OC rather than a planetary fortress, really getting that economy churning, and of course the scans to fight Burrow. Nesty, meanwhile, is trying to rebuild the hatchery here, but oh, this is close. The Muslim has a lot of units now. No Thors, interestingly, in this composition here. Three are on the way, though. One... Two and three. There we go. Other factories doing nothing. Uh, he does have the money. Maybe his macro just slipping into the Lego. Here we go. Helgens and Siege Tanks. Also, they finally gets a Raven. Good lad. Not too long after I mentioned it, the Muslim picks up a Raven. Look at his supply now. That is 170 to 137. The Muslim with the supply advantage, with in fact the economy advantage. Something I was not sure I would see in this game. But those orbital commands are so good. And these Vikings, man, their harass is so good. If you just take a look, he's up to 57 worker skills throughout the game. And these Vikings are doing really, really well at that harass. Even scanning here to see what else is there. And the Vikings just lift and they fly away. And the infest is too far behind to fungal. In fact, does not even have enough energy for it anyway. Nest T now trying to take the south expansion. Nearly every base on the map taken, only two left unused. But Mus the Muslim rather is just building up to max supply, that's all he's doing. Once he hits it, off he goes again. And Nesty now only at 153 supply. He is getting up Zerg Flyer attacks level 2, but ship weapons level 2 are on the way as well. They will be slightly behind, but do those Vikings have any armor whatsoever? No, they do not. Only getting the uh, uh, weapon upgrades. But they do have SUs repairing them. Okay, the Muslim wants to take this base here. Doing that as soon as he can. These Helens trying to scout are getting killed by roaches. So they do have to retreat. And now we have Infestors and Corruptors going to kill off all these Vikings. Good, Fungal Gross. Nice repairs from the SUVs. Keeping them alive just a bit longer. But that is the end of that. But then the Corruptors just have to turn around and go home. They killed all the Vikings, but we have four more on the way and another starport, so we can remake them even quicker. Finally, the Muslims bank is even higher than STs, hitting a thousand there and 195 supply. So now that he's secured this base, I feel like again this is another time to push. We have roaches coming in, but these roaches are going to die to the siege tanks if they get within range. Obviously, Helmets are doing damage against them, but not as much as they got plus two armor. And now the Muslim's mech army is pushing forwards. We have three Broodlords walking, but man, three Broodlords is not enough to take on this many Thors. We have six Thors in this army. Six Thors, let me tell you, is greater than three Broodlords. Hell is doing some good damage to the Infestors. They do get Fungal. They are just out of range of the Siege Tanks. Here we go, Siege Tank fire now. Coming in on these Roaches again, this fifth base of Nesty is going down. Well, it has a lot of minerals still at it, so that is a big loss right there. And now the Muslim has this really nice position in the center choke. Oh, and he's going to go south. He wants to take out the sixth base. Oh, here we go. There is nothing there seeking to stop this. This force of roaches is no way big enough. This hatchery dies before the roaches even get there. And now siege tank seizing. Ah, Thor's doing some damage. All the roaches dying. We have a PDD going down. Catching just a few of those corrupted shots. The Raven does get fungal but will survive and the Thors are still alive. So two bases off an ST. The Muslim has all of his up. He is quite satisfied at the moment. The Muslim in a great position. 180 supply to 111. And Nesty GG's. EG the Muslim takes a game off Nesty. Oh, oh, that was amazing. Oh, I do not believe it. Dim Muslim taking a game off Nesty. Something I never thought I would see. Nesty, an absolute legend, but does not do so well in foreign tournaments, it must be said. Although he did do uh, not too bad at the most recent MLG. Oh, wow. Okay, that wraps it up for this week. So thank you very much for watching Voxer Gaming. 
I have been your host, the vocal terrorist Jesse Rain, and of course, I will be back next Tuesday. But, ooh, if everything goes to plan, we will have a video upload tomorrow. What could that be? What could it be? It is the first of my Let's Play Planescape Torment. Oh yeah, kicking it old school with some RPG stuff before Diablo 3 comes out and takes over my life. So, stick around for that. It could be fun, it could be horrible. I'm sure we will find out very shortly. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next week.